As someone who covers cars from Chinese brands, there are certain types of vehicles that I simply don't get to talk about because they don't make them. I'm thinking especially of supercars. But that is about to change, thanks in part to this, the Yangwang U9 all-electric supercar. Welcome to Wheels Boy, where we cover the newest, coolest, and wildest vehicles from the Chinese car market. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Yangwang is the halo brand for BYD, China's largest manufacturer of electric vehicles. And while we don't know exactly how much it's going to cost when it hits the Chinese market later this year, we do know it will be over 1 million RMB or 140,000 US dollars. That's a lot of money, unless you're talking about an electric supercar with 1,300 horsepower. Yes, you heard me right, 1300 horsepower or 960 kilowatts from four electric motors. In fact, this is the same electric powertrain that's underneath the Yangwang U8 Super SUV that's already on sale here in the Chinese market. That's right, unlike the U8, this is a pure EV, not an extended range electric vehicle. Underneath that big wheelbase is a 100 kilowatt hour LFP blade battery from a BYD subsidiary called Fin Dreams. It's gonna provide, they claim, a 700 kilometer range on the CLTC cycle. That big battery also means a big curb weight of 2,475 kg or over 5,000 pounds. This isn't our first time seeing the exterior of this car, but we do know a little more information than we did when we first saw it at the Shanghai Auto Show last year. We now know that it's near as makes no difference, five meters in length, or about 20 centimeters longer than a Ferrari La Ferrari, for example. We also know that it's riding on 21 inch wheels that are 275 width in the front, 325 in the rear. It also has a wider front track than a rear track, specifically 1,719 millimeters up front, 1,676 in the rear. We know that the body of the Yangwang U9 is a combination of carbon fiber and aluminum. We don't know exactly what's aluminum and what's carbon fiber. We can at least see from the outside that it has a ton of gorgeous carbon fiber components, including this beautiful front lip spoiler, as well as a carbon fiber roof, which I gotta tell you in person, really, really beautiful, and then carbon fiber rocker panel. But the piece of resistance is certainly this huge carbon fiber rear wing. There will be two versions of this car available. There is this one, which is the racetrack version. It's gonna have this massive, gorgeous, full carbon fiber fixed rear wing. There is also going to be a street version, which will not have a fixed rear wing, but rather an electronically deployable one in the trunk lid. Regardless of which one you choose, there will be some active aero involved. We don't know exactly what active aero will be with what package, but just to give you an example on this racetrack version, down here in this rear, uh, rear diffuser, sorry, there are these active shutters right here. This is an active aero feature. So when the car changes speeds, these are going to respond accordingly. I know what you've all been thinking while watching this video, but what about rear cargo space? Let's have a look. Underneath that gigantic fixed wing on this racetrack version is a pretty decent rear cargo area for a supercar, at least. I say you could probably fit anywhere from two to three soft bags in here, which is enough for two people to go on a nice three day trip. And what more could you ask for? The U9 should be more than comfortable on a racetrack, and not just because of that huge wing. In addition to its quad motor E4 powertrain, it also features Desis X Intelligent Body Control, the brand's all new hydraulic suspension system. Like the hydraulic suspension on a classic Citroën DS, Desis X allows the U9 to drive on three wheels. It also allows for less practical maneuvers, like dancing and even jumping into the air. Only time and test drive will tell if it's got performance to back up all those theatrics. We may have seen the exterior of this car already, but we haven't been able to sit inside, but I am obviously doing that right now. First of all, these butterfly doors are electronically operated. Now, if I hit the brake right now, it will close both the doors and smash my camera, so I won't do that. Instead, I'll go to the menu here, click on the car, hit this, and then close my driver's side door on its own. What else can I see from this position? Well, I see four different screens. This car is, the key is not in the car. Anyways, four different screens, starting with the 
instrument cluster here in front of me, framed by this very nice steering wheel. Really happy to see that they do not have a yoke or anything like that. This is a very nicely sized, nice thickness steering wheel. We also have a screen here in the center where you can control your air conditioning, as well as, as I just showed you, things like the doors opening and closing and the navigation. Above that is a digital rear view mirror because let me tell you, there ain't a rear window in this thing. Next to that, you have this, a passenger screen, which seems to have really everything you'd expect from the passenger screen in a Chinese electric vehicle, meaning infotainment like uh, movies and videos and navigation. Kind of surprising. Most of the time in these supercars, they only have a screen where you can see the speed of the car at the time for the passenger to look at. This one's actually got a useful infotainment screen. Then again, if you are riding in this car and you are looking at that screen watching a movie instead of experiencing the drive, probably something's wrong with you. Let's focus a little bit more on this center screen, this vertical screen here. There's a bunch of options available to you, you know, your phone and your navigation and your media, but the one I care about is the one at the very top. E4. This uses the E4 electric architecture or, uh, powertrain. That's the quad motor powertrain, the same one that's in the U8 SUV. If I hit the E4 button, we can see various options open up. You can see the tank turn feature. Yes, this electric supercar has tank turn. I'm not kidding. You also see what is the competition mode. Obviously, that's going to be the mode where you can get your fastest 0 to 100 km per hour time. What is that 0 to 100 km per hour time? Well, we don't know. They say it's in the two second range. It, I don't know. I would guess really, really low twos or maybe even sub two seconds, but we won't know until they release that info later this year. You also have other driving modes, um, which you can access either through the screen or down here with this little knob. This knob inside is a small LED display and you use it to switch between your different modes. Interesting thing that I'm noticing, there is an eco mode, which seems a little bit strange on a 1300 horsepower supercar, electric supercar. Um, you've also got comfort mode, sport, and snow. So underneath of that is another combination, this is a classic BYD thing, it's a combination of a touch panel and a, a physical panel. So what happens is when I press my finger like this, the whole panel moves, but it's only going to select a certain thing. You've also got the automatic parking. That's probably going to help when uh, trying to put this five meter long, two meter wide vehicle into a parking spot. I wouldn't want to try to do it myself. And then some simple commands for your um, air conditioning. Here between the seats is a final little you know, thing here for the center console that I want to talk about. This is a wireless charging pad. Now, when you look at it, you think this is a disaster waiting to happen because if I were to put my phone here, it would immediately slide right off when I took a turn. But if I put my phone, notice that it is lowering into the center console. At this point, it's relatively safe. I still wouldn't want to put my phone here when I was on a racetrack, but at least you know when you're going around a turn, it's not going to immediately fly out of the car. While the interior of this U9 is not the final production spec, it should give us a glimpse at what it will be like when it reaches customer hands later this year. The short answer is, you can't have your cake and eat it too. When you make a supercar that undercuts the competition by tens of thousands of dollars, something has to give, and it seems clear that the U9 isn't going to provide the same level of material quality you'd find in a much more expensive Ferrari. The question that remains is, will the U9 be able to pull a Corvette? and offer a driving experience that makes up for the plasticky interior. That's gonna do it for our first look at the Yangwang U9 electric supercar. Obviously, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell because we are very likely going to be among the first English-speaking media to get a chance to actually drive this baby later this year.